Yeah, Jennifer, I'm joined here by Brody Lake and some of his buddies. They spent the whole day cooking up this chili here. It's about 100 pounds of chili that they're serving out here at Hope Ministries. Uh, and along with that chili, they're going to be serving spaghetti, cookies, and pizza and more. And they say they all paid for that on their own, along with the help of other Buchanan organizations. And while these guys are serving up dinner here tonight, they're also prepping for tomorrow's dinner. They're roasting turkeys right here, right now, getting ready for tomorrow. And Brody over here tells me that he's been doing this every Thanksgiving for about the last 20 years. Take a look. It's incredibly windy out here and our WSBT 22 meteorologists say these winds out here on Silver Beach are causing waves up to 6 to 10 feet today. The area you see behind me right here actually wasn't here about 10 years ago. Bond Traeger says the burglars got in by breaking this glass window on the back door. Then he says they came over here, bashed in this display case, stealing about eight to nine thousand dollars worth of semi-automatic handguns. It was a packed house in there tonight and we even saw people bringing in pizza and popcorn as the clock ticked on. Of course, there were also people there holding signs for religious liberty. Bob, I'm here at McNaughton Park in the city of Elkhart. We got here just about 10 minutes after police came out here around 940 to recover a vehicle from the St. Joe River. I'm live here now with Sergeant Chris Snyder. He's the spokesman for Elkhart Police. Sergeant Snyder, what do you guys know now? Prosecutor Vicki Becker walked us through that night in December and she said the officers opened fire on Gary only after they felt their lives and others at the party there were at risk. Hey Jennifer, I just ran out of the courthouse a few minutes ago as the jury declared their guilty verdict. A loud gasp came out of the back of the courtroom from the Garza family. That would be Anissa Garza, who is Kurt Coleman's mother. There were lots of tears in the courtroom as well as the verdict came out. Now we're hopefully expecting Ralston to come out of the courtroom over here in a few minutes. There's a police car waiting on the side and we're expecting her to come out shortly as soon as things wrap up inside the courtroom. And he's saying people shouldn't panic just yet. I want you to take a look at this creek over here. The water draining through here, he says, is at a pretty normal level for this rainfall. When he realized the vehicle was stolen, he turned on his lights and sirens to pursue them. And when they didn't stop, they crashed almost three minutes later here at Humboldt in college. Yeah, it's pretty hard to hear you, Farron. But um, obviously, we're having a great time with the fireworks down here at the South Bend River Lights. There are hundreds of people watching and enjoying it. Now, of course, this First Friday means that it's the start of the 4th of July weekend, and for South Bend, that means there's a lot going on. In an officer-involved shooting December 4th, Elkhart police said only one of the officers who fired his weapon was wearing a body cam. According to a public records request, that officer was Corporal Leonard Delshenko. Indiana State Police told us last month his body camera stopped working a couple hours before the incident. Because of that malfunction and others, Mayor Tim Neese is pulling the body cams from the street until further notice. Some of the problems with the cameras listed in these documents describes short battery life, continuous camera vibrating, and recording in short bursts. At that time, there were 25% of our cameras that were down, um, which, is, which is a huge amount. Sergeant Chris Snyder says the other officer who fired a weapon, Sergeant Nathan Lanzen, is a supervisor, and it's possible that's why he wasn't wearing a body cam. Specifically as to why Sergeant Lanzen was not issued one, I don't have an answer for that. Snyder says the plan was to issue the digital ally cameras to patrol officers first and gradually get them assigned to the whole department. Snyder says they decided to buy their body cameras from Digital Ally because they've already been using their in-car cameras for at least eight years. Now the relationship with that company, he says, is up for discussion. An email from Mayor Neese's office says the city hasn't ruled out any options. The city budgeted $100,000 for the equipment in 2015. We also asked for copies of video recorded by Dolshenko's body cam from December 3rd and 4th, the day before and the day of the officer-involved shooting. We were told no such video exists. Now our records request shows the policy is for Elkhart police officers to make sure their body cameras work before they hit the streets. They're to record any encounter with the public with few exceptions. I also reached out to the body camera company, Digital Ally, but I have not heard back from them yet. Jennifer, 75-year-old Keith Yoder says he, has, he had a severe heart attack back in December, but when he called 911, it got so bad he wasn't able to speak to the dispatcher. Luckily, she knew just what to do. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Brianna Giles didn't know this was Keith Yoder on the other end of this call. So it just says... What's the address? I've taken two nitros. What is the address? Sir? Hello? But she knew what to do, even if Yoder couldn't tell her. We're sending help. Yoder says the main artery to his heart was totally clogged. He doesn't remember what happened after calling 911. The next thing I remember 
is I heard sirens and I looked up and they were pulling up and right in front of my house. Today he's thanking Giles for her quick action. Is that God's got a reason to keep me alive. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you were doing what you needed to do to make that happen. Giles says it's the first time someone has personally thanked her. I'm so overwhelmed by the fact that he's standing here still because your heart just drops when, because you can't do anything other than be there for that person on the line. For Yoder, he says he wanted to thank her in person, partly because he thinks people are too hard on people like Giles. They did their job. We got good people here in this county. 911 people, firemen, policemen, they're good people. Be careful what you say. Someday you might need that help yourself. Yoder says it was only 38 minutes between the time he called 911 and went into surgery for a stent in his artery. This young lady, she did her job, and the other ladies with her, and they did their job, and I'm alive. Giles stayed on the phone until help arrived. But evidently God has something else for me to do yet, because he didn't want me to die that day.